Greetings and welcome to Chaotic V. Hang on. There we go. Ugh. Greetings and welcome to Chaotic Beagle Entertainment. I am your host, Chaos, as always. Thank you very much for joining me today, peoples. Uh, we have some very fun stuff to go over. If you had not noticed the giant large boxes that were blocking my face there a moment ago, um, these are the printer and the wash and cure stations uh, via any cubic that I had picked up uh, just recently. So we're going to do a quick unbox on these uh, and then followed up by a um, quick uh, breakdown, put together whatever kind of construction uh, to see what is in these puppies. And then uh, we're going to get to uh, printing off some minis. Uh, I will be using, I think the lychee slicer, uh, is one that was suggested by my good buddy Percival, who has been, uh, doing a little bit of this ahead of me. He's been printing out a lot of different things. Uh, so I'm gonna see what I can do and see if I can, uh, get some nice prints, some nice minis, uh, try out a little bit of terrain in there and, uh, just kind of throw these alongside the, uh, Ender 3 that I have and see what we can get out of it. So, uh, with no further ado, then again, also a reminder, if you would, if it's your first time here, I appreciate you joining me today. If you would hit that like subscribe, hit that bell notification. So you get notified when we do more videos, uh, we're going to have some, uh, uh, giveaways for things that I can print out. Uh, maybe some mech warriors, some minis might come up with a couple little sets to just give away, uh, for fun and things to print out and test. And, uh, yeah. If you guys have any suggestions on things to try out as far as testing or fun items to print out, uh, I will probably at some point, the next campaign that we're going to be running uh, for the D&D &D group that I run, uh, we're about to finish up the Rise of Tiamat with a little homebrew that I've added in. Uh, next is going to be the uh, Ascent into Avernus in the uh, Baldur's Gate area. So uh, we'll be doing that. I'll be doing a lot of prints on those minis. Uh, there's a lot of really good minis that some people have put out for free to test out. Uh, so I will be printing off a lot of those. When I do, I will make sure to put some links in the description below. Uh, so that way you guys, if you guys are interested in printing them off or just checking out free minis or whatever it may be, hey, you know, you'll be uh, able to follow those uh, links and get to that and print them off yourself as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, rip these bad boys open and see what we got. So first things... Uh, the things that I got, one was, uh, another buddy, uh, Percival has been the biggest one that I've been going back and forth with on a lot of details and what's what, uh, the other one I believe is, his name is Telthane, uh, I will link both of them in the, uh, description below for, uh, people that I've been talking back and forth with on my discord uh, i'll link the discord as well so if you are interested in just chatting back and forth with us seeing what we're printing uh trading off tips tricks all that kind of deal uh, a lot of the uh tips and tricks i'll be using are ones that uh, my buddy percival has sent my way so i'll be trying those out and just seeing what i can learn as well so uh first things first i decided to grab the water washable photopolymer resin this is just in regular ceramic gray i picked that up for my first round to give it a good test um so that is going to be the main thing that i picked up first to begin with uh, i'll link everything that i've purchased here in the description below so you guys if you're interested in grabbing any of this uh you're more than welcome to grab it you know on different deals and different sales and everything so all right but this is the first thing that i've gotten here Let's see if i can get this open without all right so this is a one kilogram bottle of water washable photopolymer resin and this is by elegu yeah, E-L-E-G-O-O. -O. So this is the very first bottle that I picked up. Um, the second bottle here actually came 
as a deal for about $130 with the wash and cure station. And then it came with this, which is... very oddly packaged there we go quiet y'all don't know me it's, it's difficult sometimes for a player I made that all right so the second bottle here is so this one elegoo this one is the uh, translucent green one kilogram 3d printing uv sensitive resin uh basic so this is the second bottle so i will probably see about getting some minis uh getting some stl files for like ghosts and and like wraiths and different like translucent creatures and characters to try out this one with uh and then trying out a lot of uh i've got a whole list of like monsters and beasts and and you know uh player character types uh that i'll be doing with the gray to give that one a test run and then this one like i said i'm gonna try some ghosts and some grew some wraiths and some oh um probably some magic spells um you know, like there's uh, different numerous spells that create, you know, um, ghosts or skeletons or whatever. Probably going to try a lot of that with this. So we do have the two here. And I'll give you an idea. After I've tested them out, I'll give you an idea of what I think of them. So we're going to go ahead and scoot these to the side. And first thing first... We're going to open up the big boy here, which is the printer itself, which is some uh, plastic gloves we've got some paper funnels we've got a thumb drive to uh, plug in not sure what size that is I mean we'll figure that out once we plug it in and kind of get it rolling so uh, we got a plastic scraper metal scraper and then the uh, the power ball. Oh, okay. So, just kind of a heads up. My buddy Percival told me about this one. It has this massive power block, which I do not understand why you would have the power block this gigantic. Like that's that's the plug there. So you got to plug this big boy into whatever surge protector he kind of gave me a heads up and uh that's a big boy that's a that's a what the deuce kind of uh power supply there but then we've got screen protector for the lcd screen and then some allen wrenches face mask more screen protector materials from the looks of it okay that's everything in this box so yeah he gave me a heads up that it was going to be big and I was thinking you know maybe like the old Nintendo or something that is bigger you know, you remember back in the old days, Nintendo, Genesis, they had those really big so uh, plug sockets, so that's a little bit big. It's longer. It's not bulky outright, which would have been better, 
That thing is long as shit. Alright. We got some assembly guides, which apparently... Not really all that much assembly is needed. Because that's, uh... In uh, Japanese on the back from the looks of it. And... Other than bolting on the, uh... The plate, leveling it, and then putting the uh, vat on and filling it. That seems to be all, all there is. So, makes that easy. Alright. So we are going to... Oh. Alright. There's the top of it there. Actually, let me put all of this stuff back where I got it from. That way I don't lose anything. Okay. So we've got what looks to be the vat there, and then the build plate attachment, and then last but not least, The actual device itself. All right. So, got a little bit of weight to it, but not too much. Quite a bit smaller in the box, but. Good packaging. Very good packaging. I like that a lot. It had more than enough like foam packaging and everything to keep it from uh, shifting around and, and banging around in there. So That is the vat with the plastic bottom to it there. So we're going to make sure to keep that out of harm's way so basically you're going to fill this up you know the bat's going to go on you're going to fill it up and then through the bottom there the laser is actually going to uh, heat and uh, harden the plastic layer by layer just quick um, from some of the build times that my buddy Percival was telling me about it is very quick so something that usually may take you know, 10 hours on a filament printer may take two on this. So it's very quick in comparison. He was uh, kicking out some models pretty quickly. So we're going to see if we can't do the same. But uh, that's basically that. The vat attaches on there. The build plate hooks on here. Looks like it has a... Looks to be aluminum. Looks to be aluminum uh, Z, Z screw. So... Basically, this thing is going to stay steady and just lift up as the laser does the uh, does the curing and the, the hardening on there. So, very nice. It doesn't look like it will take very much at all to get this put together, get it constructed, get it up and rolling. And then, uh, from the looks of it. I guess the uh, bill plate is just straight up metal there. We'll find out. We'll do the construction here in a little bit. But, um, plastic casing, touchscreen, 
Uh, the area for the, oh, it looks like there's probably some, uh, Uh, the sticker helps remove the mask from the screen guard. Okay. So it's going to have some screen guards for the lasers, probably some other guards for other sections of it. Um, so all in all, this one should be quick to put together. I'm excited. I'm hyped. All right. So let's go. For the time being, we're going to... Scoot this back in the box. Just keep it out of the way. And this is the uh, Photon Mono 4K is uh, the one that I was able to pick up. Uh, again, this is also the same one that uh, uh, my buddy Percival has picked up. I believe Telthane was also going to look at picking this up. So uh, USB port over here, power supply, or power button, power button there. Uh, looks like the power supply... Hookup is there. Some fans. Very nice. I like it. All right, we're going to drop this one back in here for now. Until we move over to where we're going to set this up. All right, there we go. All right, so that is... And this doesn't seem to hook. This just goes around the top of it. So, yeah. Okay. So, it's got a, a lip around the edge of the uh, main plate area. So, it basically just sits on there while it's doing the, uh, the laser deal. And this is the cure station. As well as the wash station. First things first. Alrighty. <laughs> so we have the upper casing there, the upper shield. station manual all right this I believe is part of the wash station that is the power block uh, let's see if the power block yeah power block this one is monstrous except well let's see Okay, so it's got a plug that you can remove. I thought it might be one that you can uh, alter, but you cannot. Again, another very large. So you can't even in a regular socket put these two devices. Yeah, yeah, you can't even plug these two, this and that. You can't even plug in unless you have like a large enough surge protector. Just a word to, just, just a heads up on that end. But that was all that was in here is the uh, power brick. And that power brick is, again, massive. You need to have, like, a surge protector or something to put this bad boy in because there's no way that you can plug both of those in to just, like, a regular wall socket. Not that you would anyway. You would put a surge protector on it. But even then, that thing is going to... You have to put it at the very end. I mean, those two items by themselves are going to take up an entire surge protector. Almost. You might have one spot in between. But that's it. All right, so here we've got the little basket. 
and then not sure what that may be. And then the looks of it. Okay. All right, so you got a little fan in the bottom there, which got some magnets on it, so that'll spin, and that will mix up the isopropyl alcohol. Nice. Okay. Decent clearance on there. Having the basket in, it's a little bit close, but it's not going to hit. So... Then maybe, I guess, does this go in the bottom? No, it's too large to go in the bottom of the basket. So I'm not entirely sure what this is for, but we'll go and drop that back in there. Because we'll do the construction here shortly, and uh, we'll figure it all out. So there's that. And then... More foam there. My large gut. And All right. So we have another box here. Uh, looks like this has got the cure plate with that. I am unsure as to what that may be. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, looks like he's got a little uh, bushing, some uh, Allen wrenches. Not sure what this piece may be, but we will find out shortly. So this is the plate that's going to spin. You have an array of UV lights that will be the uh, lights that help to cure your uh, prints, power button, power plug, fan. Bottom is metal, but the casing itself plastic so you got a button to push for cure button button to push for wash looks like this is going to be the speed control here it doesn't have like a stop or anything so I guess it's just so it has the number readout there uh, so I guess you'll just cycle it over till you get to the speed that you desire and then uh, that's really about it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and end this portion here. Um, and the same thing, has got a bit of a lip there, so when this goes on top, it just kind of settles on that lip. But, uh, yeah. So we're going to go... All right. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the video there as far as this part of it. Uh, next up, in just a moment, we will cut over to I guess putting these together going through the instructions setting them up and then uh, starting up our first print so I do thank you guys for joining me for this give me a sec let's uh, move over to the other bench and get the rest of it going all right I'll see you shortly y'all take it easy welcome all right we have made it over to the table uh, we have moved everything over here from the unboxing that we just did a moment ago uh, and I've gotten everything pretty much set up um, not very much as far as installation goes basically just pulling it out of the box uh, here let me spin the air around and show you guys all right so pretty much just pulling it out of the box um, the vat there no real prep or anything the only thing that needed to be done was they give you a sheet of paper da -da, this is this can be used for leveling you basically uh, place it on the laser bed there 
you lower, you loosen these uh, screws on the side with the Allen wrenches that were included. So you get a set of those. Uh, you essentially go and loosen up both of these screws on each side, and then you utilize uh, the move Z axis down here. Basically, you raise it up to get it to where it's at. Attach the build plate which it slides on over this section so it doesn't actually hook from the bottom it completely slides over that you lock it down make sure it's good and flush and then you basically lower it and you place this paper on there and then you hit home and the plate will lower down until it bumps and then it hits its z axis zero point um, once it's there you basically just put a firm hand on there don't press down on it uh, you just put a firm hand on there tighten up the screws. I kind of did it in a zigzag. I did the uh, back one here and then the front and then the one on the other side here and then the one in the back there. And then, so that basically is your bed level. Not very, not very super intensive. Um, at the suggestion of a good buddy of mine by the name of Percy, which you've heard his name before, uh, he suggested sanding the build plate a little bit, so I took a little bit of 120, uh, just gave it a quick little scuff down just to make sure that uh, the build plate here itself on the bottom end was uh, porous enough to for the, uh, for the resin to adhere to as it is hardening and uh, being cured, or not cured, but being hardened there. So, uh, raised up the bed we have the vat here so we're gonna go ahead and just slide that in there so oh one quick uh, uh, one quick addition as well so uh, on the build plate in the initial shipping it's going to have this film on it so you're gonna pull off just this film and that is all that you need to do as far as prep for the laser bed so they do go and give you those so remember you just pull this one piece off nothing else just this one part because they do as time goes on it states that uh, if you need to replace it let's say you get a lot of resin that's starting to seep down in there it's causing issues uh, they do give you replacements so basically uh, you'll pull off this black uh, kind of gasket here and then there's a protector that's stuck to it as well it's uh it's the polarized film i believe yes it is the polarized film so what you'll do is you'll basically just strip that off and then you have this protector that you will replace first and then the bezel gasket type piece here the black part you'll pull that off and basically line it up just like this one it has a bit of a groove in it so it basically shows you exactly where it needs to go and so you will basically do that uh, and that will get you prepped for you know more prints so we've got that we've got the cure station all together so in order to fill up the uh, wash vat there the one with the blue lid uh, I've kind of got them both together here actually let me put you guys down for just a second so for the intersection here to fill up this by it, this uh, uh, container in of itself, you'll need about 120 ounces of isopropyl alcohol. I went to a local store and got it for about five bucks um, for a 32 ounce bottle. So it ran me about 20 bucks or so, a little like $22 to get 120 ounces. You won't use the whole thing. Um, I believe uh, my buddy suggested only going up like part way on it. Uh, it can take up to 3,500 milliliters is the, you know, around about 120 ounces. Um, but you'll probably want to leave a little bit of extra space in there. So maybe 3,250 or something like that. But uh, it does take about 120 ounces to fill up the entire thing all the way. Uh, it's got the basket and everything in there. So I'm going to put that one back together real quick. Let me put you guys down here. As we do not need this station just yet, we're playing with this part. So let me go here. And I'm going to put the vat on. Make 
sure I don't have any gunk or junk on here real quick. little bit of dust but all right wiped off a little bit of dust there as we are in my basement so it does have some holes on the side where basically these screws will slide right down into don't have to go super hard. Just enough to where it doesn't shift around there. So, all right, we have it locked in there. And so pretty much at this point, I have the USB that came with it. It was a four meg uh, USB that it gives you to go along with it. So pretty much we're ready to print. So uh, give me a second to get this ready and then I'll uh, we'll show it underway here. Just hang on one sec. All right, we are back. So I uh, went ahead and got everything finished up there. Um, just kind of cleaned off my area a little bit and then uh, went ahead and uh, decided to go ahead and fill up the vat. So I've got the vat filled up. I've got my USB in. So we're gonna go ahead and start our first print and see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Um, sometimes I have some bad luck with things, but uh, should be good to go. So let me swing you guys around here. All right, so went ahead and filled up the vat, filled it up to the max line. Uh, you can see back there, it has a couple different little spaces and so you can see that uh, it says max max capacity so i went ahead and filled it up and uh we're just going to go ahead and knock out a couple of prints so and so before you go and fill up the vat though you do want to make sure to shake the resin bottle pretty well uh it was a uh, very suspect looking so i did not record that part uh did not want the internet to have any fun with uh uh, me looking like some kind of a fool shaking around a giant bottle, but maybe another time, maybe another time. Throw it in the comments. If you want to see the, uh, the bottle shake, uh, uh, dance that I do, uh, throw it in the comments below. Uh, but so we got the vat filled up, it's locked in, and basically we've got that going. So we are going to back out here and we're going to go ahead and hit print. First things first though, before we do that, let me set you guys down again. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that our shield is on. There we go. Don't want any wildness coming out of there. So we've got a couple of different things. Uh, we've got the little test object that they give you to begin with. Um, but I actually have something else in mind. Figured if I'm going to be printing off a lot of different, uh, probably Battletech miniatures and D&D &D minis and different stuff, I might as well start with one of those. So I actually have a uh, Timber Wolf here that I'm going to print off and I have the base with it and it actually states that it's a uh, Timber Wolf and a slash, you know, Mad Cat if you're an Inner Sphere junkie. But uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and select that and then hit the play button and the estimated print time for that is five hours and 31 minutes so we're gonna let that roll and then once it's done we'll uh, work with playing with the gear station goes printing off that first layer so in printing these uh, I did use uh, the lychee free software uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below I used the lychee software it was a uh, highly suggested one by several people that I know that are also working with the Anycubics as well uh, so using the lychee software um, so I did that put it on the thumb drive uh, 
I used a, they have a automatic uh, way of putting supports on, but instead I actually looked at a couple of videos and then decided to do it manually. So I did manual supports on this item. Um, so did those manual supports. And uh, after doing the manual supports, I put a raft on the bottom of these, so that way once it is it is uh, cleaned, it'll be easier to remove uh, from the uh, build plate. Uh, so basically with the build plate, you will put it into the wash station with the build plate still attached, wash the item, then remove supports, and then you'll put it in there to cure. So it'll be a two-fold function for that one but I went ahead and uh, did it with a raft on the bottom that has an actual little like uh, lip to it just to make it a little bit easier on myself from the suggestions that I got and from the different videos I watched. Uh, so we will see how this turns out. So uh, give me a sec and we'll be right back. If I get a chance uh, while it is still printing to give you guys some video on that, I will do it as well. So uh, we'll do that, and after we get maybe some video on that, uh, also going to video up the wash station, how that kind of goes, uh, and then also going to get the Ender 3 running. Probably going to test out a few things, uh, looked at some different settings with trying to do top layers to get better looking miniatures on that. Uh, I know I'll probably end up doing a lot of terrain on there easily, because uh, I, like the I, I very much like the look of those. Uh, and I think those would use a great deal too much resin to make some of those buildings viable. So uh, with that, yeah, we're going to go and get some of those going and then, uh, yeah, add that in and uh, show you guys the fun. So I will also do a Timberwolf on the Ender 3 so that way we can compare uh, the freshly started Timberwolf that's running right now and then also do one on the Ender 3 with the modified uh, profile which I will link my profile in the description below as well, just in case anybody's interested in using it. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of it, throw it up, and then uh, we'll just kind of go from there and see how it runs. But uh, yeah, I will be getting this up and running as well, so that way we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and have a little fun with that. So I appreciate you guys joining me. Hang out for a sec, and uh, we'll be right back.
right, and there you go. That's what it's like to use and what it looks like when the uh, uh, resin printer is running. So before you sit, many of the 3D prints that I have run through the resin printer, the uh, Anycubic is the uh, one that I have, uh, as you have seen in the earlier parts of this video that we did the unboxing on. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done that, so uh, I've had some time to pump out some prints. Um, before you, we have things from uh, tanks and uh, mobile HQs and battle mechs for uh, Battletech, Mech Warrior, that kind of thing. We have a huge number of the prints that you may have seen in some of our other videos with the live D&D RP. I have now moved over to a point where anything that we're going to have in the D&D sessions is going to be 3D printed. Uh, one day I will sit down and actually paint some of these. <laughs> um, but as you can see, basically I am going to a point where anything that I put down on the board is going to be exactly what they see. Um, now there's going to be some generics. We've got, you know, cultists with the capes and daggers. We have um, imps and tressums and uh, bandits and uh, horror uh, helmed horrors and all kinds of different stuff but there are going to be some very unique units that you kind of see in the background here from demons and angels to um, you know giant insects uh, we have uh, some golems and some uh, deity gods uh, and just some little uh, dragon mages and stuff in here as well. And they come out beautifully. The amount of detail that comes out in these, uh, you will be thoroughly amazed if you get down to a point where you can see one of these close up. The amount of detail and small um, bits and pieces uh, and textures and different stuff is pretty impressive. Um, I also have a Etsy page up if anybody's interested in 3D prints. Um, if there's something that you would like 3D printed, uh, there is going to be an availability on there to where you can send me the file and I can print it out for you. And then, you know, just a charge of the materials and time and then ship it out to you. Uh, there is also a large number of things um, that I have the PLA printers and the resin printers to print all kinds of different things. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, please let me know. Check that out. I'll, I'll go ahead and link that in the uh, description section below. So if anybody would like anything, um, you can hit me up anytime. Otherwise, I, I've had so much fun uh, using this. The primary software that I've used to basically build these out and create them has been uh, Mesh Mixer for any kind of modifications or changes that I've need to make needed to make to a model. Um, and then the actual slicer I have used for the 3D printer, I've used Lychee Slicer, which I'll put the uh, information up over here. Uh, so I've used that to actually put these files in, slice them, position them, add supports if needed, uh, and then basically send it down um, put it on a, a external drive and then bring it down, pop it in the printer and hit go. Um, these things are just so awesome. We've got, you know, ogres and uh, uh, battle mechs. I've done some things where I've added like missile barrages coming out of the battle mechs. Uh, a lot of really awesome things, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I've had a ball with this and I intend to have a lot more. Um, but those are the main things for any of the PLA printers. I actually use the Ultimaker Cura slicer for those items, but for this one I use Lychee. I've had a ball with it. I've got everything from, uh, what do we got? We've got Abyssal Chickens over here. We have, as you've seen, the actual player characters that are going through the Descent into Avernus uh, campaign that we are currently running. Um, but we've got flying fists and, you know, sorcerers and mages and um, little red caps for those that know what those are. Those are angry little guys. Uh, we've got so much stuff. So many awesome, awesome prints. The, de the fine detail comes out 
beautifully in these. Um, some of them do have some skinny parts and the stuff will print out, but you had to be very careful when you're removing supports on some of those. Uh, a lot of what I do is I will actually take these and run them under uh, hot water. So the resin, the resin that I actually use, um, I think I may have mentioned it earlier, is the water uh, washable um, Elegoo. Um, I use the water washer, the water washable. Ugh. Uh, and that is some of the best stuff that I've come across. I, I've used a couple bottles of the regular stuff and it's okay, no problems. It has a little bit more in the way of fumes. Um, this does not seem to have as much in the way of fumes unless I start to run a lot of prints back to back to back. Um, but with removing supports and doing that sort of thing, I basically take it up to the sink, run some hot water, almost hot water. Some very, very, very warm water. Uh, and many of the supports will actually go and just kind of release. Uh, so you don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it. So that way, if you have, you know, a demon with a very long spear like this guy here, um, which it's kind of wobbly, but um, I was able to keep it pretty well intact, just taking my time, running the hot water, getting those supports to release. And that way it comes out without too much of an issue. Um, the sturdier parts, you know, even with some of these that have wings, they are pretty, pretty sturdy. Not a lot of issue. Uh, the supports and everything did come off of those very easily um, with the hot water. I like it. I like it a lot. This is a lot of fun. Um, I will see about maybe doing some more videos later on. But before you, like I said, this is a large portion of what I have already printed. I've made a huge number of prints for buddies. Um, I've made some prints on my Etsy page where I have printed out a couple of um, chess sets. Uh, I have, I think there was what, the orcs, the vikings, the dwarves, and the medieval set. I want to say, the, or Greek set. There's one of the two, I can't remember. I think there's like four sets on there. Um, and I've printed off a couple of sets of those and they came out beautifully. Uh, the small detail in like the runes that are, are carved into the axes that the dwarves have, um, the texturing of the fur on top of their armors and, and you know, around the necks and different, oh, comes out so awesome. I have so much fun with this. Um, I can sit for hours and just play with the software and put stuff in there to print. Um, but it does take time for some of these to print. You can usually get out a couple of prints uh, with the resin printer, depending on what you're putting in it, um, a couple of hours. I have not really had a print that has taken more than maybe six to seven hours. And that was some of the, the big boy stuff back here. You know, the, the winged ones, the, the hell wasps, um, just a lot of different stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, had a having a ball with this. Uh, so, hopefully, if you guys like this video, want to see more, uh, would like to have uh, more information, uh, again, I will link everything that I can in the description below on uh, where to download Mesh Mixer, Lychee, Cura, some of those uh, software programs so that you all can use them for yourselves. I will link the hardware that I have with the um, 3D printers, uh, the resin printer itself, and then the curing and wash station as well. I will link those below, so if anybody's interested in picking up one for yourself. Um, this is not a bad starting point. Uh, if you're looking to get into it, it's not a whole lot, a couple hundred, and you can honestly get the 3D printer and the curing and wash station uh, at the same time. And then I believe the deal that I got, you could see I have the uh, printer, the station, and a whole bottle of resin right off the bat. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Not a bad starting point, having a ball with it, loving the fact that I can basically print off whatever I need, whatever I want, and make this just that much more enjoyable for myself as a gamer, as a tabletop gamer, as a board gamer, all that kind of stuff. It's so much fun. Loving every bit of this. So 
I'm going to keep going with it. Hopefully you all are going to join me in this endeavor uh, and roll along with me, checking out some of the different videos, some of the different people. Uh, I do hope to someday start doing some cosplays of my own. So keep an eye out for those videos if you're interested in that kind of stuff as well. Um, I do have a larger form factor uh, Elegoo printer that I recently picked up. Uh, going to see about trying to make some helmets. So you might be seeing me in some Iron Man, Batman, um, Mandalorian, some really cool stuff coming along. Watching some videos, trying to get the hang of that, and just more to come, more to have fun with, you know, just a lot of fun. So thank you guys for joining me on this channel with doing the 3D printer and having all the fun. Uh, I do appreciate every bit of it. If you do have any comments, questions, concerns, anything else, throw those in the comments below. Love talking with you guys. Love having fun and sharing all of this that I can with you all. So, I'll leave it at that. This is Chaos with Chaotic Beagle Entertainment signing out for today. I will see you all in the next video. Have a happy, safe, and fun week, and I will see you later on. Later.